Hey guys, what's up? I'm Jake. And I'm Andrew. And we're with the 5 Whiskey Club. And today we're going to be, I guess, trying out the Ab Abelor? Abelor Abunad. Ab It's a Highland single malt scotch. It's heavily sherried. I'd go as far as to say that it might be one of the most, if not the most heavily sherried whiskeys that you're going to find. And it's actually an interesting little story behind it. It's first off, so you guys may be able to find this near you. It is released in limited batches from anywhere from one batch per year to upwards of five batches per year just kind of depending uh, I don't know what the most recent batch that they released was or when it was but typically you can find it at most like decent liquor stores um, but it's interesting because so the guys at Avalor were actually distilling and they were installing a new still one day and they found a bottle wrapped in newspaper from 1898 the newspaper was dated that and that paper was wrapped around a bottle that was labeled Abanad, which is what we have here so that's what this limited release is it's basically a whiskey that's designed to taste like that whiskey that spirit that they discovered from the year 1898 so it's got a good history kind of story to it and the range in here can range anywhere from five years to upwards of 25 years in this blend so and it's bottled at cast strength so this one each batch is different this batch that i have is batch number 62 and it's bottled at 59.9 percent from what i understand i think the highest percentage that they bottled was like 61 or 62 percent so it'll hover around that range but we can try it out i don't know if you've ever had this i haven't well i think i tried it with you once but i honestly i can't remember i'm not even sure if i have tried it with you Oh boy, it's good. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> it's like, uh, you'll see. It is, I get such huge bright orange zest notes off of it. Oh yeah. And that deep raisin that you get oh, off the boy. sherry. It's very fruity. Very fruit, dark fruit forward and citrusy. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, no joke. Oh yeah. What'd you say the percentage is on this? Fifty nine point nine, so sixty percent pretty much. Right right at that point. Whoa. Yeah. Fruitcake. <laughs> Christmas spice else. fruitcake. There's something yeah. really huh. Yeah, it's got those really deep, deep plum raisin Woo. There uh, it is. It's heat. Yeah, there it's it hot. is. <laughs> That's not a joke. Does not have that characteristic that you typically associate with Highland uh, whiskey though, where it has that light smoke to it. I don't really get a light smoke out of this. It's really mostly just that nice fruity, but dark notes. It's wild. And you know, coming from a bourbon drinker, mm -hmm. this is impressive. The proof is impressive. Oh yeah, yeah. There are wow. some scotches out there that are pretty high, but it is rarer for sure. Much more rare to find these higher 60% plus scotches, I think. Yeah, that's like bourbon. I think it's Chad with it's Bourbon Night. Mm -hmm. They, I think they were doing their whiskeys of the world or whatever. Mm -hmm. he, he had a pretty good term that I can completely agree with on this. You know, they've got the Kentucky Hug. Oh for yeah, high proof bourbon. Yeah, I think he called it the Scottish Embrace. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm getting on this right here. This is a Scottish Embrace for sure. Now the uh, Avalor's founder James, I think it's Fleming. Yeah, Fleming, James Fleming. He, uh, he's the original guy and everything. He's who is believed this was his kind of blend that he was making back in the day, back in the 1800s. Oh, and so, so they're modeling it after his Yeah, his blend. kind of uh, less of a... Uh, so this is kind of like a heritage type. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, this is kind of, this is kind of Avalor's uh, uh, quintessential, like this is their origin story, basically, blend. This is, this is what they were making when they yeah, first started yeah. kind of thing. And, uh, or at least it's supposed to be like that. It's their old fits or their uh, Blantons or yeah, what yeah. have you. Yeah, and if they're doing it right, then yeah, this is this is a whiskey that's supposed to taste like a whiskey from 1898. So it's 
it's a interesting one for sure. I, I crack it open every once in a while and I really like it. It's very characteristic. Avalor in general, you'll definitely know whenever you find one because of this big wax. In fact, here's the top. We'll actually sit okay, on there. But let's They're just talk about the ridiculous cork size. On this oh, thing. yeah. Huge. <laughs> <laughs> it is a big cork. We're talking. <laughs> yeah. Like, let me see this thing. Yeah, it's about the size of the dram, I think. Like, this is like <laughs> one of our uh, little club chips or whatever, and it's actually the same oh, exact size. So you could plug a dram with it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Whatever. Uh-huh. That's interesting. <laughs> that is interesting. Guy, yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh, I think maybe the Elijah Craig might uh, win in comparison for biggest, biggest cork, you could say. But other than that, I don't know of a whiskey that has such a ridiculous... Oh, you know what? Actually, my Habiki. The Habiki Harmony has quite the cork on it. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember. What's the one you just bought? Uh, the Akatoshin 3-wood. Did that one have... It was a pretty normal size cork. Oh, okay. Yeah, average. For some reason, it's... No, I think the most impressive one I have is the Habiki with that big crystal cork yeah. on the top. <laughs> and this is all Spanish Oloroso cherry. Sherry. It's, uh, uh, it's not any of the other weird, like I, we just brought up the Akintosha 3 wood, I know that that's, uh, that's aged in two different sherry casts, I don't remember which, one of them is the Oloroso. It's almost an oatmeal. Yeah, it is a little it's oaty, almost an I could see that. Going on there. Kind of like a, uh, uh, but specifically like one of those oatmeals, like the, the instant ones, you know, like Quaker, Yeah. that have like the fruit in it, like one of the like strawberries and cream. Okay, so for some of our newer viewers, why don't you explain kind of what we're talking about when we're talking about a sherry scotch. Yeah, yeah, or sherry whiskey in general. Yeah, sherry. It's a, uh, so basically whiskey is aged, as everyone knows, kind of thing, like in any kind of typically oak barrels and whatnot through most of its lifespan. But then there's a process called finishing that a lot of uh, whiskeys are really taking on nowadays. And that's where you get your sherried whiskeys from, which basically from like a sherry wine, yeah, this is an Oloroso sherry wine, Kind of like what you would cook with whenever you see an ingredient asking for sherry wine or anything like that. Same thing. So just like whiskey, wine is also typically aged and matured in barrels. So what they do is that they take these used barrels that used to have sherry wine in them, and then they finish, I don't know how long, typically. I think it just depends on the... It depends on the whis whiskey, yeah. Uh, and they will finish aging though these whiskeys in those used wine barrels they actually what's interesting is that it doesn't just sit to sherry but i don't know if you guys now nah, you can't see it but up top we have the angel's envy which is uh an interesting case because it's actually finished in port wine barrels versus sherry so it's kind of a unique thing not a whole lot of whiskey uh distilleries are doing that right now and so yeah you can get uh we have this Finished. Yep, this is another sherry one. I, I didn't bring my Glen Morangi. The Glen Morangi 12 is another sherry wine. Finish. Uh, Everything by Macallan. I know that most people have probably heard of Macallan if you're drinking whiskey. Pretty much everything. They're kind of known for their sherry whiskeys. That's pretty much what they do. And uh, but yeah, that's that's. And so this one, for instance, is going to be heavily sherry, aka it's either, whether that means it's age just for longer than most whiskeys and sherry barrels or uh, the type of sherry that they're using it all just depends if you end up with very unique products but because of that uh, you do get kind of a basic note from it whenever it comes to sherry whiskey and typically that is dark fruits so think like dried plums or raisins and things like that, and you'll get that in any kind of sherry whiskey. I'm gonna put and some yeah, water we'll put in. Put some this. water in. Yeah, I've never put any water in this actually. I'm curious. How many? We're gonna do two. Yeah, it's not too much, so just a little bit, I think. We'll see. It's a little more meaty than my nose, but it's. Oh, it it's blew up in my nose. The proof went down, the flavors have come out a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. A little more to play, but we'll see what's about to happen when I take a sip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm still getting that sharp, tart, orange zest kind of... Wow. Mm. It's a lot friendlier. But the flavor's wow, still there. Yeah, the fruit really punched through that time. Yeah. 
Insane. Huh. Yeah, the darkness kind of lingered away, that black, bitter coffee kind of thing. And uh, it really jumped into that It fruity. almost reminds me of like a white wine. Yeah, yeah. I've just, I've, uh, uh, yeah, wine in general, I've kind of, is where I've sat with this whiskey. Which I guess would add up, being mm -hmm. the heavy sherry influence. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, see. it's a very unique whiskey. I haven't had anything that's quite like it. But it is, it's not beginner friendly, I wouldn't say. <laughs> it is pretty challenging. And it's, it's a very, it can be pretty abrasive for someone who's not prepared. Just because of that proof, it's a pretty high one, especially for a scotch. If you're used to drinking like a barrel strength bourbons and things like that, this one won't be too bad. But if you're like a scotch drinker, I would be surprised if you had had very many scotches of this proof. Oh boy. I'm just smelling it right now. Oh, I was about to say, I was like, whoa. <laughs> People don't typically drink sherry wine anymore. <laughs> it hasn't been a really Actually, common thing. Actually, you know thing. what, though? That doesn't smell too bad. Oh, God. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> I hate it so much. Oh, there it is. It's a... It smells like feet. It smells like... Freaking dough. Oh, but you know what? It is similar. You yeah. That. That's why I broke it out. Okay, I can totally see yeah. that sherry yeah. coming through in there. I can totally see right where that's at in the flavor profile. It does ring, at least in our area, kind of hovers around $90 to $100 typically. But it is, so it is kind of on the higher end price wise, I'd say. But I'd say it's well worth it. It is a. Like we were saying, it's it's. There's not another whiskey I have had that tastes like that. It's so good. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, I like it. It's, uh, it's one of my tops right now. One of my mm -hmm. top scotches. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, if you would just drop a like and subscribe to this video. Uh, also check us out on Patreon. We have a lot of Patreon only stuff going on. We got the Patreon only podcast early access to content. We're gonna have polls, things like that, going up here in the new near future, so you can kind of ring in and have some suggestions for our upcoming videos plus it helps us keep bringing you guys good content um and also check out our website uh, it's 501whiskeyclub.com uh, we have a lot of cool stuff going on over there forums blog uh, all sorts of stuff it's a lot to cover <laughs> just a little bit of talking but definitely something worth checking out um but without further ado like i was saying just make sure you like and subscribe and we'll catch you guys on the next one